We're good. <clears throat> good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the building, planning, building, and environmental committee meeting for this evening. <clears throat> I'm Joanne Chichok, and I'll be chairing the meeting this evening. And I'm going to look to members around the uh, rest of the committee to ask if there is any, <clears throat> pardon me, disclosure of pecuniary interest and or conflict. Seeing none. I'll ask if there's any change in order of items on the agenda requested by members of committee. <coughs> Seeing none, we're going to proceed. This is wonderful. Okay, so the clerk advises me that we have a public meeting, but that it's different than usual. usual. So if I falter, please bear with me. <coughs> Tonight we have a public meeting uh, being held to meet the requirements of the Ontario Building Code Act, SO 1992, Circ 23, as amended. Is the township's intent to repeal the bylaw number 2011-64 as amended and enact a new building bylaw which will include a new schedule of fees? Okay. In accordance with section 7 uh, sub 6b of the Ontario Building Code Act 1992, we are required before passing a bylaw uh, for regulation or resolution, council must hold at least one public meeting at at which any person who attends has the opportunity to make representation with respect to a proposed change of the schedule of fees. In accordance with Section 7, Sub 6A of the Building Code Act 1992, public notice of this meeting was given through advertisement in the October 18, 2016 edition of the Grimsby Lincoln News, as well as <clears throat> being posted on the Township's web website. Mr. Treble, uh, can you please give us an overview of Report PD 15116, with the, which is the building bylaw and schedule of fees. Thank you, Madam Chair. What I will do, Madam Chair, is I will um, give, her. give a really brief uh, introduction to our chief building official, Jeff Bernard, who is, is in attendance tonight. Uh, Jeff will lead us through the proposed bylaw, which is in some respects, Madam Chair, I would call it a housekeeping bylaw. It's a bylaw that uh, uh, attempts to improve upon the wording and language of our current building bylaw. Um, out, and, uh, excuse me. And out of an abundance of caution, uh, we're providing um, a public process through which to advise and inform the public of the intent to change the bylaw. Um, but the fee schedule itself is not really changing through this process. So the intent is to hold the public meeting, have some discussion around potential changes tonight. It's a tech report, and uh, we'll bring a rec report back at a later date. And I'll turn it over to Mr. Menard to speak briefly about some of the key highlights of, of the changes he's proposing. Just before he starts, <clears throat> Mr. Treble, have all members of council met Mr. Menard? I'm, I was just quizzing him, and I don't believe that to be the case, Madam Chair. I think there's maybe three or four that have met Jeff, but not, uh, not everyone around the Well, board, welcome sure. to our committee. And uh, thank you for being here, and we look forward to what, you, what it is you're going to tell us. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, as Brian alluded to this evening, um, the, the bylaw that, we brought, that we're bringing forward as a proposed bylaw is one that is primarily a housekeeping bylaw. Uh, we are required by the Building Code Act to have a public meeting uh, anytime the fee schedule changes. And in this situation, the fee schedule has changed in the sense that the fees are reorganized in a, in a different manner, but the fees have not been increased. Uh, the reason for that is that I've only been here for a number of months. I haven't had a, a, enough experience with the town to find out where we are in terms of our budgeting and that process to determine whether or not the fees are set appropriately. I do understand that there is a building uh, reserve in place and I thought it, uh, it wasn't appropriate at this time to raise the fees uh, arbitrarily. Um, so what, we, what I plan to do is over the next year have a look at the fees. I've already done a review of the fees in relation to other <coughs> municipalities in the region. We are, if not the lowest, second lowest in the region uh, with respect to building permit fees, which makes us very competitive uh, on the market. Um, <coughs> that said, uh, in order to determine whether or not we're going to meet the full cost recovery, uh, that will take more than the few months that I've been here to determine. So that would be my intent over the next year, if not more, to determine whether or not we are meeting that cost recovery model. And if not, I will be bringing further reports forward to make suggestions as to 
uh, how the building permit fee should increase in the future if need be. That said, the majority of the changes in the bylaw are such that they are, as Mr. Treble said, mostly housekeeping. We've organized the bylaw in a bit of a different manner to make it a little easier to read, a little easier to understand for folks that uh, do unfortunately have to use it on a regular basis. Um, but essentially the bylaw is there through the Building Code Act to identify when it is permits are required, how those permits are, are uh, applied for, and uh, how we process them from that point forward. So if, if I could, I'm just going to refer to a few of the items that are identified in the report that will be presented later on this evening just to identify some of the updates and the modifications. Uh, the first of which is, uh, recognize, is to recognize electronic applications. Uh, we've made, through both Brian and myself, have made <coughs> proposals to uh, senior management team, which ultimately was a part of the budget process. Um, to look at ways to make the building department more efficient. And one of those ways is to entertain electronic applications. Many municipalities, not only in Niagara, but across the province, are starting to receive applications electronically. We're seeing the world uh, in, a, in a much smaller way in that it's not uncommon for us to get applications from consultants that are out of town, that uh, it isn't convenient to come into the office to make application. So this helps in that front, as well as helping to make the, those other local folks uh, as efficient and convenient as possible. Um, so it won't necessarily mean that all applications have to be electronic, but simply that we will be accepting them electronically. Um, we have uh, uh, updated the application submission requirements. Um, we've essentially taken the existing schedule that was in the bylaw and we've embellished it to ensure that everyone is fully aware of what is required when an application is made in accordance with the building code to ensure that the application is complete um, to its fullest extent and that will ensure that the process can move, move forward as quickly as possible. Um, again, just relating to the expanded schedule of fees, uh, there hasn't been an, an indication that there will be any increase to the fees, simply a reorganization of those fees. Um, we have introduced uh, perhaps a greater breakdown in certain areas. Uh, one of one area in specific being the uh, alterations and additions. We've added those sections within the, the bylaw to identify um, and more fairly ad administer those costs. So. If they're doing less work, they would pay less fee, uh, and so on. So that is is really how the the schedule of fees has been modified. The conditional permit agreement uh, component is similar to the the language that was previously added to our current bylaw. Um, so we've carried that forward in the new bylaw, and perhaps one of the larger components is is that of lot grading. Um, what we've done here is. In the past, it's my understanding that there's some history uh, within the township um, to try and curtail the um, tardency of, of lock grading and it being far longer than, um, than is normal. So what, uh, what the, my understanding is is that there has been language put into several subdivision agreements to establish rules and regulations for which uh, a deposits are taken prior to occupancy um, if a builder wishes to obtain occupancy of a dwelling prior to lot grading being complete. So in conversations with Brian and myself, as well as our uh, legal representation, we've discussed a way to perhaps make it a little cleaner and a little fairer so that uh, all properties that are under subdivision uh, are, are identified through this process not necessarily just the ones whose subdivision agreements happen to be the newest or most recent. Um, so it's kind of a, a catch-all so everyone's treated the same way and everyone's treated fairly. Um, so <coughs> essentially what it does is um, it builds on that same requirement that a lock rating deposit will be required in addition to the ones submitted at the building permit stage at occupancy if an applicant does wish to obtain occupancy prior to completing the lock rating. Final grading. Final lock rating, yes. 
Um, above and beyond that, we've also made some changes to the lock rating um, in respect to the responsibility. The way the language uh, currently reads is that the town ultimately takes responsibility for the lock rating, uh, whether it be accepting the, um, the initial that's submitted with building permit stage, uh, as well as the final lock rating certificate that's submitted uh, several months after occupancy. And in, in some of the agreements, it looks to the town to take the responsibility for that agreement. Um, what has started to occur uh, in many municipalities in, in the region as well as the province is that it's being recognized that these drawings, these documents are being created by folks that have professional credentials and qualifications as they are engineers, architects and surveyors. They have the professional requirements to do those drawings as well as the insurance to cover them should something go wrong. So what the initiative is is to actually shift the responsibility from the town to the actual surveyor or the engineer who's uh, preparing the document to ensure that it does meet the intent of the building code as well as the intent of the lock grading plan. Uh, that plan still will be reviewed by staff. It will be reviewed in accordance with um, our policies and our procedures in-house, but we are relying on the responsibility of the, the uh, surveyor or professional preparing the document to ultimately take responsibility for that document, which is if we were an architect's office, that would be the expectation on the surveyor as it would be in any other legal capacity. Um, so this kind of gets rid of the anomaly that, that exists uh, within, the, within our process. Um, beyond that, what we've also introduced is um, because of that responsibility both uh, at the initial stage and at the final lock rating stage, what it does is it eliminates the requirement for the, um, the top of wall, essentially, uh, plan for to be submitted. So that plan currently is being submitted prior to the backfill inspection. For those of you who have been involved in construction or have some construction background, you would understand that um, after the foundation is poured and before the backfill can be placed, um, a top of wall inspection is, been, is currently being requested. Um, so this system would eliminate that responsibility or that requirement for the top of wall. Reason being is there's other opportunities through the lock rating process um, at the completion stage to correct those items. Um, and furthermore, to be quite frank, the request or the process to obtain that top of wall is being challenged by several, uh, several professionals because of the health and safety concerns with, because they actually have to kind of tightrope walk along the top of the foundation wall, which many are, uh, many are refusing to do, making it harder and harder to find someone who will uh, participate and provide that top of wall survey. So again, we're recognizing that, we're trying to be proactive uh, rather than waiting for someone to come forward and say, we're not providing it, we're not gonna do it. We're gonna identify that and, and uh, make the necessary change now as we update the bylaw moving forward. So that's, uh, there are many other little kind of idiosyncratic changes that have, uh, have occurred within the bylaw. Um, none of which I think I will bore you with this evening. Um, however, if you do have questions, I'd be more than happy to answer them. Thank you, Mr. Menard. <clears throat> and at this time, uh, I'm looking to the public to see if there's anyone wishing to make a submission, either oral or written, uh, regarding this new building bylaw and fee schedule. Uh, this is your chance to come to the microphone, so anybody wishing to uh, make any comments on what uh, the proposal in Mr. Menard's report, this is the time. If you'll just tell us your name before you start, that would be great, and who you represent. Uh, Madam Chair, through you to the committee members, my name is John Henricks. I'm the Director of Land Development at Phelps Homes, and Mike is a donor. Good. Our clerk is very, very finicky, so you'll learn that okay. it has I'm, to be done right and I've done once. I've worked with a finicky clerk uh, quite recently, so I'm... Shh, don't say that to her. She oh, gets she upset. Was, <laughs> she was wonderful. She is wonderful. <laughs> She's uh, still, still there. Um, so I just, I, I will be brief. Uh, Phelps Homes is generally supportive of the new bylaw. It's certainly going to provide greater consistency and clarity to the building permit process in West Lincoln. 
and certainly the electronic uh, fi filing of applications is, is a positive change as well. We do want to draw attention to uh, the section or the schedule dealing with deposits. I have had an opportunity to speak with uh, Mr. Treble uh, previously, um, so he's, he's well aware of some of our comments and concerns. I think they are specifically, uh, we're specifically concerned with the broad application of $5,000 deposits on a per unit basis uh, to residential housing. Now, town staff has recently contacted us and asked for participation in the review of the township's uh, site plan control process. So perhaps further dialogue on grading deposits and any other uh, industry concerns that may come up, uh, those can be considered as part of this process before adopting the new bylaw. And I do understand from the presentation that the fee schedule is still something that uh, would be coming back in a recommendation report. And, and again, I think it's, uh, uh, it's, I believe the staff report indicated something about tweaking. Uh, we, we could certainly um, approach the deposit question in, in that uh, spirit, I think. That's it. Thank you, Mr. Hendricks. Thank you. Anyone else wishing to? Uh... Okay, seeing none, I'll ask one more time. Is there anyone else from members of the public wishing to come forward at this time to make comment regarding the uh, <clears throat> the building bylaw and fee schedule amendments that are being proposed by staff? Seeing none, it's now council or committee's turn to make comment if there are any. Councillor Bell. Yeah, it's on. Uh, <clears throat> through you, Madam Chair, to Mr. Tribble. The uh, changes you're making are very positive. I, I agree with Mr. Hendricks. They're, they're very positive. I just have a question that are all concerned parties being contacted to have input into it? As Mr. Hendricks alluded to, they have had some input. What about other developers? Are, are they being given the opportunity also to have input? Through you, Madam Chair, there's there's a couple of parts to that answer, perhaps. <laughs> um, the first one is that this is a public process here tonight, so everyone that has an interest in the, in the building bylaw um, has an opportunity to uh, show up and, and uh, voice their input. Um, having said that, in addition to this meeting, um, there is a sort of a separate process that's been underway with respect to lot grading and, uh, and drainage related issues and um, it all started back early this year or maybe late in 2015 when the recommendation to put in place the $5,000 security deposit for lot gradings at occupancy stage uh, was, was introduced to committee with a commitment that we would um, have some further discussion and dialogue with the development community. One of those meetings has occurred already. Early April is, is my recollection of when that happened. Um, and so since then, uh, Mr. Menard and I, and, and before Mr. Menard, uh, Mr. Newfeld and I, have had some discussions with uh, Township Legal Council. We're working through, as I think I reported to committee uh, in October, we're working through some changes to the subdivision agreement and the site plan agreement. Those changes I'm hoping will dovetail in with the changes that, that were discussed in the building bylaw so that sometime, perhaps as early as next month, we can bring a report back uh, with respect to the building bylaw and how all of the lot grading and stuff uh, will happen. And there will be one last chance for input from the development community as part of that process before that report comes forward, hopefully in December. Uh, and then the final point, as Mr. Hendricks has, has identified, um, there is a separate process underway to do a review of our site plan uh, process from start to finish, and, and certainly that kind of dialogue is, is possible at that point as well, Madam Chair. Thank you, Mr. Treble. <clears throat> Good. Anyone else? If you wouldn't mind, I have a couple quick questions, mm -hmm. and that is, um, with regard to fees and the fact that the appropriateness of their cover, car carrying them over uh, or whether or not our fees in place cover your operating costs. Um, I, I guess the only concern I have is that the developers that are here or not here tonight, uh, to them, development charges and fees and, and any kind of levies that we, we put upon them are a pass-through cost as long as the house isn't sold. 
So I really hope, uh, Mr. Menard, that, that you get this done as soon as possible because anybody who goes out there and starts selling houses, and I'm understanding that there's a number of projects that are underway, we've had them coming to us, they should be ready to go and they'll have <laughs> shovels in the ground doing their servicing and they'll start selling. If, they, if our fees are incorrect, the sooner we know them, the better, because that meeting will mean that, you know, there's usually a lift in the agreement with the purchaser, but they're a cap on that. So I don't want developers coming back to us and saying, your fees have gone up too high, and now we've got to eat them. You made a very good comment. Our fees are the lowest in the area, so let's make sure they're appropriate. Let's make sure they're sustainable, and if not, tell, tell us sooner rather than later what they should be. Absolutely. Um, to answer your question, Madam Chair, um, in my experience, the way I've I've approached the raising of fees is is certainly one in that will happen in over a pro process or over a progress of time. Um, that being said, I do intend to start looking at this information in the new year um, once I can better understand the budget process here in the town. I'm still getting familiar with the processes as how it's approved, how, uh, when it's approved, uh, what my budget is for the year, um, and what the expenses are. We, we have, uh, through Mr. Treble and myself, we have made some presentation uh, to uh, senior management, as I've indicated, recommending a few changes so we want to make sure that we capture those changes in those fees as well so that is certainly something that will occur in the new year uh, i will bring that report forward and what my intention would be is if there is going to be a recommendation for an increase in those fees then what it would be is potentially a phase in process over a number of years or over uh, a six month period uh, every six months th they increase and what i would like to do in fact is is give um not necessarily um, uh, an end number, but a number that, that happens over a five-year period um, because I think there's value in that. Uh, just establishing a fee now and then leaving it until the next time we do a review I think is a little negligent in that um, it leaves us behind the eight ball all the time. So what I'd like to do is present it in a way that we have an annual increase that is reflective of um, the other increases that occur uh, through inflation and whatnot through the construction index so that we can identify that there will be an increase on an annual basis over a period of time so that it, they can be planned for, they can be identified in, in sales agreements and those types of things and, and that the builders and the development community can certainly budget for those items. That's fine. And Mr. Menard, <clears throat> welcome to West Lincoln. You've been here for a bit. I just don't want you making promises we can't uphold. Until we do that first review, it may be a change and better sooner rather than later. Bill 161 protects your income into a little pot that you're all there for, but i like to know that we're on the right track. So would the builders. And I think that presentation to all of council would be useful about, about how your, your fees are structured and the fact that they're held alone. So, um, anyway, that's just something. I have a real bugaboo. I, I hear from many people how it's a problem. So, and the other thing is about the uh, lot grading. Uh, I had a question which was giving it to the surveyor, and then I heard Mr. Hendricks mention it. And the question I had was, uh, if we're giving it to the surveyor, we will still have that security in place until the town has reviewed it, I take it. You said we were going to give the responsibility to the surveyor, the professional, to tell us that it's appropriate. I just want to make sure that if we ever had to enter someone's property for whatever reason, we still have in place the 5,000. There's, there's many people who think they survey and grade differently. And I know some people <coughs> modify grading the minute they move in. Absolutely. I'm just looking to make sure that we've got the surveyor on the hook, but we also have the deposit and we'll remedy any difficulties in understanding the grading. The the system or the process won't change. It's simply who uh, will be held responsible for that drawing. So essentially the professional now is submitting the drawing and the town takes responsibility when they, when they accept it because there's a requirement or a request certainly that we stamped accepted and approved on there, which means we then approve that lot grading. Rather, uh, in the system as proposed, the professional would take responsibility for the work that they've completed we would still hold them accountable for that. We would still hold those deposits until such a time 
as uh, we can confirm that it is complied with uh, the overall grading plan for the town. That's wonderful, and I, I, you're, it's wonderful having you here and knowing that we've passed the torch on to someone that wants to get on top of this. I guess my questions are just because I see that there may be more activity, and it may be a sudden burst. I just want to make sure we're fair to the development community and people buying their houses. So thank you. Uh, seeing no other questions from my colleagues, I appreciate your presentation, and we'll look forward to your uh, not technical report. <laughs> Okay, uh, anyone wishing to be kept informed or notified of the council's decision with respect to the new building bylaw and fee schedule is asked to sign the attendance sheet by the door uh, and indicate uh, that they wish to be notified of council's decisions. Now remember, this is a public meeting, and uh, I call this meeting complete at 6.59. Okay, moving right along. Oh, I don't want to have to There are no appointments for this evening's meeting. Uh, there is time allocated at this meeting for uh, individuals wishing to speak uh, to items on the agenda. Uh, we have one hour set aside for this uh, section of the agenda, and each individual person shall be provided with five minutes to address their issue. Uh, is there anyone here this evening that wishes to address items on the agenda? Please come forward. I have a PowerPoint to go with it. So. Wonderful. You've got that under control? Yeah, I think so. Great. Lights, camera. Hey, good evening, Chair, Councillors, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I'm Angela Bonamici from IBI Group in Hamilton, and I'm here to speak on item P114-16 which we know as uh, the zoning for Old Town Gateway Estates. Um, John Arians from IBI also is here, and he's more familiar with this file than I am. However, I was here at the last meeting, so just to keep things consistent, I'm going to present to you guys again. And um, I, I'm also here with uh, Anthony Chirella from Mars Homes, and that's another aspect we would like to present to you guys today. Uh, currently, the subdivision is under conditional purchase by Mars Homes. Uh, Mars Homes is an award-winning builder slash developer who have provided quality homes for Ancaster, Binbrook, Hamilton, Stony Creek, and Grimsby. And they are really excited now to expand um, their communities to West Lincoln and they're excited to be a part of a team to help grow the community in West Lincoln. So to speak to um, this conditional purchase that they have, uh, Mars is keeping the site layout completely the same. So there's 31 single detached units still and 15 uh, townhouse blocks as well. Um, there is a change with the townhouses because with the old townhouse layouts, they were thin three-story units, which had an interior unit of 6.1 meters and an exterior unit of 6.3 meters in width. Uh, Mars's townhouse product is a more traditional two-story townhouse, which has a 6.5 meter interior unit and a 6.6 .6 meter interior unit. Um, so with this new layout, uh, we do require one more additional zoning modification, and that is to the um, ground floor area, and that's to be changed from 84 square meters to 81 square meters. This is due to, even though they are wider, they're not as deep as what the previous townhouses were. 
with uh, putting in their product into the townhouse blocks, here is our draft plan. And if you can, I know it's kind of hard, but if you can see where the red lines are along the western portion of the property, it's just shifting of those um, block lines to make their townhouses fit. Um, the unit count for this resulted in we lost five townhouse units, so in total when we were here last time it was an increase of 10 units, it's now only an increase of five units. Here's an example of a uh, Mars townhouse. Um, I have a couple to show as well and I just want you guys to notice the high quality design, um, the use of different building materials, lots of articulation between the uh, units and the differing roof lines. Um, Mars is really excited to bring this type of unit to uh, Smithville. Uh, with the report and um, just the slight modification, staff did propose five new conditions uh, to, the, to the report. Um, we reviewed the conditions with our client and they accept them. And so that is all I have to say. Thank you very much. Um, the report will be coming up. And I think it more appropriate that if any members of council has a question, when we get to that report, we'll be able to bring you back. I'm sure you won't, won't want to leave until you, after you've seen what we've done with your report. So, uh, and and thank you for introducing. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, the gentleman from Mars, Anthony Chirella. Anthony Chirella. So, welcome to West Lincoln, and uh, I'm sure that you are going to be just as anxious to see what we do with it, <clears throat> on so that it won't be conditional anymore. <laughs> Okay, so we'll look forward to seeing that report a little bit later on the agenda. Okay, are there any others wishing to speak to items on the agenda this evening? No. This would be the time. Anyone wishing to speak to anything on the agenda, and I'll leave that up to you, ladies before gentlemen, or the fellow that's almost there. Go ahead. <laughs> So if I could have your name, the issue you're reporting, you're speaking to, and the, and who you're representing, please. Uh, my name is uh, James DeVries from National Building Group. I'm speaking on issue PD 150-16. Good evening, Madam Chair and Council and residents of West Lincoln. As in your agenda, you can see I've requested municipal so support of West Lincoln Township for West Lincoln Township Council for two 100 kilowatt <coughs> rooftop solar projects report number PD 150 16. One is located at part lot 8, concession 2, Regional Road 14, which is owned by Lambert and Belkia Dykstra. This project would be a new build used for equipment storage and hay storage for their dairy operation, which is operated also in West Lincoln at 267 Regional Road 14. The other location is owned by Webrand Dykstra at 1046 Smithville Road, Regional Road 14. This project will be a new building replacing the storage building on site for use for the use of equipment storage and shop and their ongoing operation. The feed if tariff, tariff program was developed to encourage and to promote use of renewable energy sources for all Ontario people, including onshore wind, water power, renewable biomass, landfill gas, solar, for electric, electricity generating projects throughout Ontario. The fundamental object of the FIT program is in conjunction with the Green Energy and the Green Economy Act of 2009 and long term energy plan of 2013 to facilitate increased development of renewable generating facilities of various technologies using a standardized open and fair process. The FIT5 contract was opened October 31st, 2016 and was to close November 18th, 2016. They had a mass amount of traffic on the system, crashed the system, delaying it to open on November the 7th, 
which will be now closing November the 25th. So it's a very short window for opportunity to get the contracts in. They say this is the last round for the FIT contracts. I would assume everything from here on will be net metering. FIT 5 rate is at 20.6 cents, very close to what we are paying now for our hydro or even higher if you include all your delivery charges that we pay. But the FIT 5 contracts can be transferred over to a net metering system at any time. The financial sense of just to put solar up for clear revenue does not make a good business model financially, but if in need of a new building, it will help offset the capital cost of the project. Both projects are on the Beansville Transfer Station feeder line F3, has capacity from a 10 kilowatt to a 500 kilowatt, so connection and capacity is not an issue. The resolutions were two priority points and are high on the list. If these two priority points are not obtained by the council busting and the likelihood of receiving a contract becomes very difficult. We would like to request if we could get municipal support for these from this body tonight, if possible, due to tight, tight timelines. <clears throat> In closing, I would ask the Council of West Lincoln to support these two new projects built with solar at part lot 8 concession 2, Regional Road 14, and at 1046 Smithville Road, Regional Road 14, and Lambert and Belkia and Wilbring Dykstra. I'd like to thank you and wish you for your continued support on this project. <coughs> Thank you, Mr. DeBoer. Uh, is it possible that the clerk could be given? Oh, sorry. <laughs> You're right. Um, well, thank you. <laughs> and uh, is it possible that the clerk could be given a copy of what it was that you presented to us this evening? Please. And if you don't have it right now, she'll gladly make a copy. Okay. We'll take a quick break at some point this evening. Okay. okay? Thank you very much. Sorry about that, Mr. DeBoer. Okay. Uh... Anyone else? Yes. Kathy Jones, um, live on Dufferin Street in regards to the old gateway. <coughs> um, I still have concerns about the 50 foot wide lots since our houses are pre existing. Um, I still have concerns over the parking. I think <coughs> the parking, my biggest issue, and I realize my family is not the norm, but my house is the only house I've ever owned. I don't ever plan on moving until I move to that cemetery on the other side. And um, I have a problem with the parking. Um, you have these kids that we want to develop for a nice family <coughs> area. They grow up, and we have such awesome colleges and universities in this area. And being I've sent some kids to college and university and have many nieces and nephews, the cost is cheaper to commute. And if these kids grow up and they're 18 and they have nowhere to park, and we don't have public transit in Smithville. Other areas, Toronto, Burlington, Hamilton, you want to go to Mac, you want to go to the other colleges, you can take a bus. You need a vehicle to drive. And if you have visitors parking, those kids take up that so you can forget about the visitors parking. And you can't park on our street. I've lived here long enough when it was a free-for-all. Park anywhere you wanted all day long, who cared? That, the parking is still an issue. The garages are full of snowblowers and lawnmowers and bicycles for these kids. It's not being used for a car. It's just the way it is. I'm lucky. I have a 50 by 140 foot lot. I got a shed. I can throw the stuff in there. These lots are so small and so jammed, and the backyards are so small. The kids can't play in them like mine did. There's no place for a shed. You're not going to walk a bike through a condo. So parking is still, I think, an issue in the subdivision. The other issues that we, Dufferin Street, there was three concessions we were given 11 years ago. The 50-foot lots behind us to conform with us. We were given that, okay, taking it away maybe. The other issue was it was to be fenced off from us. It was not, I have a fence. Some neighbors on Dufferin don't have fences. It was supposed to be. I wish somebody could find the minutes from 11 years ago. We were promised that the subdivision would be totally fenced from us. It would not be an issue. <coughs> I'm concerned that that is an issue. That fencing was never brought up. The other concession that we were given, we were told they would be affordable family housing, the houses behind us, one floor. I am now concerned it's going to be two or three floors. My house is quite a bit to the street. I realize they're going to be closer to me. I really don't want to, I would like to keep as much privacy as I possibly can. Um, 
I mean, I've got gorgeous trees that have been planted behind my fence in that field that would not con bother with those houses in any way, shape, or form. It'd be nice if they didn't have to decide to just go in and clear cut them all because they're right behind my fence. Um, so those are still my concerns as to the promises that were made to us 11 years ago and the stuff that's been taken away from us. I mean, it's only the one side of Dufferin Street. I, um, I <coughs> lived in this community. I'm not leaving anywhere, and I just don't see why we aren't allowed to have a few concessions as far as pre-existing. So that's all I have to say. Thank you very much. <coughs> Anyone else wishing to speak to any of the items on committee? Uh, good evening. Good evening. My name is uh, Martin Dykstra. I'm speaking on behalf of uh, Lambert Dykstra and my brother, Weber. Um, I'm speaking towards the report PD 150 16. Um, my father and my mother are the <coughs> owner of uh, Lot 8, Concession 2, and my mother is uh, the owner of Lot of 1046 Smithville Road. Um, we would really appreciate your support in the FIT 5 solar contract for our farming operation. As we keep expanding and keep modernizing our facility due to the high cost to remain competitive, this will uh, help our farm grow financially while contributing to the province's green energy mandate. We would really appreciate your decision tonight to approve our project. Thank you. Thank you. And if you have a copy of your notes, regardless of how small they are, it helps the clerk when she's doing her minutes. So, thank you. I'm not looking to uh, t to force people to come up to the microphone. Just want to make sure we've covered anyone. Everyone is there. Anyone else wishing to speak to any of the items on the agenda? Seeing none, I'm going to move on to the consent agenda items. <coughs> and we have four uh, consent agenda items. Um, one uh, regarding Sean Biss and Sean's auto site authorization, uh, the amending site plan agreement with Smithville Christian Reformed Church, the AT Realty AgriTurf amending site plan agreement for John Deere, and uh, removal of date site, dated site plans <coughs> from title at 1607 Abingdon Road. Now. <clears throat> owned by Premier Kosher. And so the resolution would be that Planning, Building, Environmental Committee hereby approve the following consent agenda items, items 1 to 4, be received, and that the recommendations contained therein are hereby adopted. Barring any exceptions, I need a mover. Mayor Joyner, you wishing to speak to those as well? Uh, I would like to pull one, actually, too, but I'd be... I'll get a second, and we'll pull yours. Uh, second, Councillor Bell. <clears throat> Mayor Joyner, you wish to pull which? Number, number two, Madam Chair, please. Item two. Okay, so that will be item one, three, and four are left as consent agenda items, seeing no other poll. Items to be pulled. All those in favor? Those three items carry, and with regard to item two, uh, it will be recommendation regarding the amending site plan with Smithville Christian Reformed Church. Sir. Thank you, Madam Chair. One quick question uh, through you, Madam Chair, to the Director of Planning, Mr. Brian Trouble. Uh, Mr. <coughs> Trouble, has all of the conditions been satisfied by the Niagara Peninsula Conservation Authority out the back of the property? Through you, Madam Chair, um, staff had a, a chance to have a meeting with the applicant and his uh, agent, or and their agent, I should say, on Friday. Um, about the only issue really left uh, to sort out is um, the outlet for stormwater from the property. It's historically always flowed uh, westerly off the site onto the adjacent lands, uh, which are farmlands, um, and both the Conservation Authority, uh, I should say not just both, there's three parties, the Conservation Authority, uh, the Region, and, and Township Public Works have asked to have that outlet legalized basically so that there is a, a written understanding that the waters can continue to flow west. Um, the proponents in the process of obtaining that approval as we speak, they're not resistant to it, it's just a matter of, of achieving access to the right individual who lives in the city somewhere that uh, they can then get that proper sign off. 
I'm hoping that's maybe directly in response to the mayor's inquiry, but certainly that was one of the biggest concerns of the Conservation Authority was legalizing the outline. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, thank you, Mr. Trouble, for that response. That's exactly um, the kind of answer I was looking for going forward. And I just want to make one quick comment, Madam Chair. I want to say thank you to your staff and thank you to the Smithville Christian Church, too, as well, for uh, coming together and finding some common ground. Thank you. Thank you. And I would hope, that, Mr. Mayor, that you are going to be willing to move that item because I let you speak out of turn. I don't have a mover and a seconder. So moved by the mayor and seconded by Councillor. Well, the new councillor on the block. <laughs> I guess you're kind of old now, Cheryl, uh, Councillor Ganan, but welcome again. Uh, we'll second to that item. Are there any other people wishing to speak to that item? Okay, I'll, I too want to compliment sta staff and the members of the, of the church for resolving this issue. I know it's been on the table for a very long time, and I understand, and I've seen some of the renderings, and I'm a much better, as I said much earlier to someone else in the audience, you know, put two minds together and you get a better product because we don't all have exactly the same, uh, the, the best idea in the house. So glad to see that that was a productive outcome. All in favor? That motion carries. <clears throat> uh, there is one communication on the agenda for tonight. That is a receipt from May Dunning and Annette and John Van Angstrom, on behalf of concerned residents of Wellamport, with regard to a petition that I believe has been presented to the clerk uh, regarding the poor and unsafe condition of the old gas station in Wellamport. And the recommendation staff have prepared is that the petition, as presented by May Dunning, Annette, and John Van Hangstrom, on behalf of concerned residents of Wellen, received on October 17, 2016, regarding the poor and unsafe condition of the old gas station in Wellamport, located at the corner of Regional Road 27 and Camborough Road would be Region Road 63, be received and referred to staff uh, <clears throat> as a bylaw enforcement matter. I need Mayor Joyner. I need a seconder for that. Yeah. Councillor Trombetta. Did you wish to speak to that? Okay, then all in favor. That motion carries. Thank you. Yes. Okay. <clears throat> now moving on to staff reports. Uh, we have a report PD113, which is a technical report re regarding the new building issue, and report PD15116 regarding new building bylaw be received, and that any comments received through the public meeting process and review <coughs> be reviewed and taken into consideration when finalizing the language of the bylaw, and that the proposed draft building bylaw be brought forward for adoption at the next council meeting dated December 19th and shall be in effect, force in effect as of January 1st, 2017. I need a mover. Councillor Trombetta, seconded by Councillor Bilsma. Comments? I was beginning to think we weren't going to do that one. No comments. Well, all in favor? That motion carries. Is there an exciting television show? No. Um, okay, item P114-16 with regard to a zoning bylaw amendment for Old Town Gateway, <coughs> Smithville. Um, the recommendation is that report PD-13816 regarding Old Town Gateway Estates, Smithville Old Town, application for rezoning dated November 14th be received, and that the application for zoning bylaw amendment 1601-020-15 submitted by IBI Group be approved, and that the section 30 set 34, pardon me, sub-17 of the Planning Act apply and no further public meeting is required, and that the subdivision agreement <coughs> that will be required as a condition of draft plan approval include the following clauses, a $10,000 contribution in ca for cash in lieu of parkland, dedication for the loss of parkland space, a $20,000 contribution to the township be dedicated uh, towards future crosswalk on St. Catharines, that the parkland, sorry, that the parkette be constructed prior to occupancy being granted for any of the proposed units, and that a parking plan be prepared to show the number of available on-street parking locations and that the streetscape enhancement, street lighting, interlocking brick, etc., be provided along with the entrance to Old Town Gateway development along St. Catherine Street. I need a mover. Councillor Bell, Mayor Joyner. Okay. Uh, anyone wishing to speak to that item? Mayor Joyner. Thank you, Madam Chair. 
Uh, just a one quick question, and there'll be, I'm sure, some further dialogue. But through you, Madam Chair, to Mr. Treble. Mr. Treble, the 20,000 B, the $20,000 contribution to the township to be dedicated towards a future crosswalk across St. Catherine Street, will that be asked of all developers on St. Catherine Street and the parameters there? Will it be in the west, College Street, and in the east to Town Line Road to the potential roundabout? Through you, Madam Chair, yes. I, I guess ultimately that would be the decision of Council to implement such a condition at the appropriate time, but um, in my mind the answer would be yes, that we should be asking for cost shares from other developers that come along along uh, St. Catherine Street. And, and there's three that come immediately to mind that, that we'll be developing at some point. Uh, there's a vacant lot to the west of Union Cemetery. Uh, there's the land immediately across the road, uh, the, the railway piece on the north side of the creek, south side of St. Catherine Street. And there's also uh, potential development lands at the very east end of town, uh, the lands that are in, I think, three different ownerships right now that, that ultimately could be contributors as well. So that this is, this is one contribution towards a, a crosswalk that is in the neighborhood of at least $100,000 and uh, multiple other contributions I think would be appropriate for Council to approve when those applications come forward as well. Thank you for that response, uh, Mr. Treble. Madam Chair, that's all the questions I have, but I would like to make a comment, but I want to give um, all the Councillors a chance to ask their questions first, please. Sure. Uh, Councillor Bell. Through you, Madam Chair, to Mr. Treble. Just want to clarify, so this development, uh, first of all, I just want to let them know that I'm not opposed to this development moving forward, not at all, okay? Uh, the concern that Mrs. Jones had about fences on the rear, this section of development, is that on the west side of this development or is it on both sides, west and east? Through you, Madam Chair, the Old Town development is located to the west <coughs> of the Dufferin Street uh, properties. And to the best of my recollection, there is a condition of fencing included in the conditions of draft plan approval that were renewed in February, and that is not changing in any way. So there will be fencing required by the developer as part of the future development. This is just one component being the zoning. There's a, a series of 50-some conditions that have to be satisfied as part of the plan of, of subdivision development, and, and those include fencing requirements. Boundary fences. Boundary fences, fences around the storm pond. That's right. There's a number of different types of fences required in certain locations. Good. Thank you for clarifying that. And uh, the next one, I guess, would be just looking for, you know, approximate times. When, when are we looking to start this, uh, you know, put a model home out there, start selling real estate? bringing people in for it, and when are we looking to move forward with it? Through you, Madam Chair, that might be a question better referred to um, uh, the agent. Um, I know the conditions of draft plan of subdivision approval must be satisfied by the end of March or some date in March. So I, I, I know the developer and his, his uh, consultants are uh, very familiar with uh, with that deadline and, and perhaps can speak more effectively to the actual timing of development proceeding. And then there's servicing that will have to be undertaken. Yeah, uh, Madam Chair, by, by the end of March, all 50 whatever it is conditions would have to be satisfied. One of them is the rezoning that we're dealing with tonight. Another, the biggie, is, is uh, proper engineering plans being reviewed and approved and they then get implemented through a subdivision agreement. All of that work has to be done by March at the very latest, possibly earlier if the client's intending to proceed quicker than that. But until a subdivision happens, they won't be doing servicing. Uh, subdivision agreement must be signed, securities in place, <coughs> then servicing can commence. That's so to correct. the best, it would probably not, this, none of this will happen until probably later in 2017. But we'll let them decide. Would you like us to have the proponent answer that, or have you got any other questions, Councillor Bell? No, it just seems awful late, that's all. I thought it would be senior. Anyway, just, I'm glad that he's come to town. I'm glad we're going to move forward with this development, so that's all. Uh, Mr. Arians, would you like to clarify what your timeline, kind of just give us a timeline, and these things slip. Great. 
All right. Angela Sanding. The future. Good evening, everybody. Through you, Madam Chair, and the members of the committee. Um, my name is Anthony Cadella with Mars Holmes. First off, I'd like to say thank you. We're pretty excited to be here in this town. Um, to answer your question, we, we would like to get uh, get the ball going as, as quickly as possible. Um, we actually already have our people in the works to work on marketing plans. Um, obviously, as you know, it's conditioned on, on various aspects, but we're looking all into that right now. Um, but if, if everything kind of goes according <coughs> to plan, we'd like to be there as, as early as uh, early spring, uh, perhaps even earlier with some marketing material. We plan on getting it out there to the public relatively quickly, creating a database. Um, as mentioned earlier from Angelo, we, we've been able to amalgamate uh, some sort of database with all our other sites. We have a lot of interest of people that want to come out to this area, so we've got a lot of large, uh, a large base to work with right now, so we can send out notices, put them on notice that you know Smith is on the map, and uh, we're here to stay. So we uh, we look to do it as, as quickly as possible. Thank you. And just for more, you for, for more technical answer. Oh, um, sorry. Yeah. Once once this gets approved, we can get the calc plan going, the subdivision agreement, and then uh, start clearing the conditions and do the detailed design. So, yeah, we're hoping early spring. And shovels in the ground. I have one in my trunk right now. I know, I understand. <laughs> I do too, but it's for snow. <clears throat> Just so that we don't mislead anyone, because I think this site has caused a lot of misgivings, and everybody's been enthusiastic, but the reality is that this is going to be, you hope to be in the ground 2017. It's through you, Madam Chair. I can appreciate, I, I understand the, the history of the project, uh, of the lands. Um, we definitely want to, like I said, make our, make our presence known and start as quickly as possible. Okay, Mr. Chairman, uh, Mr. CAO. Uh, Madam Chair, through to Mr. Treble for clarification. Um, when are they able to um, erect a sales office slash show home? Um, you know, there's that, usually that one unit that, that goes up. One usually okay. timeline is it? Offsite. Through you, Madam Chair, the uh, the zoning bylaw is written in such a way that it allows for a show home now as as uh, part of any development plan. Um, if it was model units, they would have to be done through the subdivision agreement, but an individual sales office kind of facility is permitted right now through uh, through a building permit. So uh, the sooner the better. I just want to make sure there's no more questions now that you're there. No. I, Councillor Trombetta. For the first time. For the first time. <laughs> Thank you, uh, Madam Chair. I just I just got a question. Because it's such a, obviously a, a subdivision that was also a long time ago, and now the, the properties that are on the west, I guess east side, Dufferin Street, they probably have mature trees, trees that are overhanging on the property line. Is there anything in the plan of subdivision to protect or or have a tree protection plan or anything in that case? Is anything encroached on that property? I haven't walked the property, so I don't know. So just I know it's it's a um, it was a broad question I'm giving out there, but is I know we're going to put a fence line, you know, overhang and stuff like that. We want to make sure that the residents don't lose you know, if they've planted things along the back line of their property or such, right? So is there anything in place for that, Mr. Treble or? Mr. Um, Treble? I'm just, the three of Madam Chair, I'm just checking the conditions of draft plan approval. I don't recall any condition of a tree saving plan. Um, and, and once, like, like the, um, the counselor, sorry, I haven't been walking the site to specifically know where the trees are in relation to lot lines, but um, there's been nothing identified to date about a tree saving plan that I'm aware of. So can we, can we, I don't know if I have to refer back to staff to get some more information on the, the, because like I said, along that property line, I'm quite sure there's overhang and, and I don't want to see anything that someone planted. It's, you know, that, uh, Certainly it depends on what side of the fence it's on. If it's on their side, it would have a tree preservation perhaps of sorts, but if it's on the other side, we don't have a tree no, preservation No, and, and I understand that, but if it's on property line and there's still overhang is what I'm trying to say or something, is there anything to protect that tree from being damaged in any sense, right? Because some, some can have sentimental value to these residents that have lived for a long time there, right? So I just want to know if the, what are my steps, Madam Chair, if you could help me out with that one. I'm not too sure that we would, we, we need to look at that as a bigger, broader issue with the fact that a number of, of subdivisions and or site plans are now coming in that are infill. And so they're touching against existing communities. And it, 
it's very, very prudent for us to take a look at tree preservation bylaws and, and uh, hoarding, et cetera, that should be put around existing trees that borderline fences. But uh, to the best of my knowledge, correct me if I'm wrong, Mr. Treble, but I don't believe West Lincoln has anything of that nature or the region. Oh, no, there's a tree cutting bylaw that the region has. That's about it. And it, of course, is exempt once you're into a development plan such as, as what's before us here. So there is nothing certainly in place at present that would uh, require preservation. I can think of one property where there was a preservation uh, condition attached, and that was the, t the uh, crossings on the uh, 20 development south <coughs> of the creek north of town line. There was right. a preservation plan attached to that right. plan. But that's the only plan of late that I'm aware of that's had such a plan attached. So to allow Councillor Trombetta to get uh, a concern addressed, the, it would require us to refer this back to staff to look at a tree preservation program. I'm seeing the members move along here. Because I don't, we don't want to see this re referred back to staff. And, and quite honestly, we might be dealing with something that is non-existent because they may actually be scrub kind of trees that no arborist would want to see preserved. Then, and I, I totally agree. If it's not on the property, I, I, obviously there. It, or if it's <laughs> impossible to save because it's more of a, a weed yeah. than it is anything else, Mr. Arians. Madam Chairman, <laughs> <laughs> um, to answer the councillor's question, uh, typically the the detailed engineering design starts with an existing conditions topographic survey, which identifies all trees on or near the property lines. Um, as part of normal engineering, we have to match grades at all property lines surrounding the development. So if there are any trees that are in close proximity to the boundary lines, they're identified. Typically, proper hoarding is put in place so that we don't disturb the root zones and that the subdivision proceeds from there on. So it, it is something that we typically do look at with every subdivision, even without having a tree preservation condition attached. So rest assured it will be addressed as part of the detailed engineering. Great. Thank you. So, Councillor Trombetta, it is a question that you should actually throw back at staff as well. It's a very good point, and as we move forward, people are going to be very concerned about trees. West Lincoln, our predecessors kind of took a lot out because they would rather farm. So, it's something that you may want to bring up at another time. Yes, thank you, Madam Chair. Thank okay. You. Are there any other questions? Right. I just have one thing, and that is that I'm I'm delighted to see that you are that the proponent is willing to put in uh, the park the parkette uh, ahead of time. It saves on the mess and inconvenience to people and delays of usage of the park when it's when it's uh, put in at the very end. And quite frankly, it is a selling feature because people then see the park. Mm -hmm. um, I I just wondered if this parkette is designed to have any equipment in it. Through you, Madam Chair, I don't believe there's anything in the capital budget as of yet with respect to this parquet. It would be something that would be deliberated on through budget sessions in the future. The, the only thing I would like to see, and I'm not going to impose it all th because I don't want to see this stop, but the thing is we need to start establishing standards for parks, parquets, and various our community parks. We need to put them into our development charges, but we need to get the developers to put them in and complete them, complete with equipment. We should build the standards. We tell you we want a monkey bar that looks like that, of that quality, but we should have it all done, rather than disappointing people and chopping up a park afterwards. So uh, what, I'd, what I'd like to see happen is if this park is going to be uh, uh, completed, that if there is equipment that was going to be put into it, and it is in our budget, and it is in the development charges, you know, when you're doing the park, I'd like to see cooperation between the developer. I know Mars from other communities. I know you do this. So I'd just like to see us be able to start doing that here. And these are things, like Councillor Trombetta is bringing up in, in this item, that we need to start putting into our, our conditions to make sure that we are going to get completed subdivisions, completed site plans, without anybody waiting or delinquency that we're going to argue over at the end. So fair warning? Great. Uh, we'll look to have your cooperation. Anything else? Oh, Councillor uh, Mayor Joyner, you have a comment. Thank you, Madam Chair, and I too, uh, Anthony, are very delighted to have Mars Homes here in West Lincoln. Um, for far too many years, this property has been flipped far too many times, and we've got our hopes up and only to be dashed by something that's, that's come along. So um, I'm very excited to, to know, and, and, and I believe the mem 
like many members around this horse are very excited to see that there's actually something that's going to, to happen with this product or with this property. And I've seen some of your product, it's very exciting, so I'm very much looking forward to um, your development here in West Lincoln. I, I think it's very important that uh, E, that the streetscape enhancements, um, we'll be looking forward to see what you want to bring in as far as street lighting, your interlocking brick. Uh, I, personally, myself, I believe that there should be some kind of gateway coming off of Regional Road 20 into this property. Something exciting, something that's saying that you're that here is the latest development that West Lincoln has to offer. There are many different areas that West Lincoln has to offer, but this will be the latest one. So I'm looking forward to that. I'm very excited to hear that the you know that your your planner, Mrs. Bonamici, has, has said that uh, the twenty thousand dollar contribution to the township where it concerns the future crosswalk. That's good on you. That's good planning. That says that your company is is and does know about other policies and things that are happening here in this township, like our environmental assessment on Regional Road 20. It says that you put safety first in our community. And although it won't be just your people or the people that buy your your property that will be using this, it'll be all the people of West Lincoln that'll be using this crosswalk. It says that, that your company is standing up to the forefront and making sure that safety is is paramount. So I, I, I commend you for, uh, I, and I commend the planning staff and, and uh, Madam Chair for uh, for bringing that forward. Um, again, very excited, uh, looking forward to, to many years of working together with Mars Homes and uh, like the rest of the councilors around here, uh, we're really looking to get that shovel out of your trunk and get it in place, get it in play. <laughs> Thank you. And as a new business and chair of the Economic Development Committee, uh, uh, my colleagues around this table would like to welcome you as a business to, to West Lincoln and to many years of, uh, of fruitful and positive cooperation and business together. Thank you. Your success is our success. Thank you for the opportunity. We look forward to working with <coughs> you. Thank you. Just watch for new rates. Okay. <laughs> On the floor, we have a motion. I'm looking for all in, all in favor. Do you remember the motion? Okay. The recommendation. Uh, those against? Okay, that motion carries. Okay. Thank you. Um, is there uh, is there want for a two minute break? I, I saw that kind of uh, look in some people's eyes. So we'll we'll stop here for a minute and just call a short recess. We'll allow everybody two minutes to uh, <clears throat> do what they have to do.